At the backdrop of World War I, Russia, an empire of vast lands and diverse peoples, found itself entangled in a conflict that stretched its resources thin. The year was 1917, a year that would etch its mark in the annals of history as the time when the Russian army, once formidable and vast, began to crumble. Imagine an army, a force of millions, stretched across a front line that spanned thousands of miles. Now imagine that army, ravaged by war, bleeding from countless wounds. The Russian army was facing conditions that were nothing short of catastrophic. The losses were staggering. Millions of soldiers had fallen, leaving holes in the ranks that couldn't be filled. Morale among the troops was at rock bottom. The war was taking its toll, not just physically, but psychologically. The men were tired, hungry, and feeling the sting of a war that seemed endless. The supply chain, too, was in tatters. Food was scarce, ammunition was dwindling, and the winter cold was biting harder than ever. But the war was not just a military endeavor. It was a catalyst that was stirring the pot of discontent among the Russian people. The populace, already strained under the weight of an autocratic regime, was feeling the pinch of the war. Food was scarce, prices were skyrocketing, and the voices of dissent were growing louder. Soldiers on the front lines were not just fighting the enemy, they were fighting their own disillusionment. They were questioning the purpose of their fight, their sacrifices. And back home, their families were questioning the same. The war was not just a fight against the enemy, it was a fight against the very system that had thrust them into the battle. The war was not just a military endeavor, it was a catalyst for deep-seated discontent among the Russian people. It was the backdrop against which one of the most dramatic events in history would unfold. It was the prelude to a collapse that would change the face of Russia, and indeed, the world. The tipping point came in March 1917, with the February Revolution. Amidst the harsh winter and the pangs of war, the Russian people had had enough. Workers took to the streets, demanding better conditions and an end to the war. The protests swelled into a full-blown revolution. The Tsar, Nicholas II, found himself in an untenable position. Unrest was not new to him. His reign had seen several instances of public dissent. But this time, it was different. The people's anger was palpable, their demands non-negotiable. Faced with the prospect of a bloody civil war, Nicholas did the unthinkable. He abdicated the throne, ending more than three centuries of Romanov rule. A provisional government was hastily formed, comprised of a coalition of liberal and socialist forces. They promised reform, they promised a new Russia. But there was a catch. The provisional government, despite the public outcry, decided to continue the war effort. The decision was a controversial one and led to further dissatisfaction among the people and the soldiers. The new government, rather than quelling the unrest, had just stoked the fires of revolution. The new government promised reform, but its decision to continue the war effort fueled further discontent. The stage was set for a power struggle that would define Russia's future and change the course of history. A pivotal moment was the issuance of Order No. 1 by the Petrograd Soviet. This order, issued in March 1917, was a radical shift in the balance of power within the Russian military. It essentially stripped officers of their authority and handed control over to newly formed soldiers' committees. These committees, composed of ordinary soldiers, were now in charge of making key decisions. This included everything from strategic planning to daily operations. Imagine the seismic shift. The traditional military hierarchy was turned on its head, and the men on the ground, many of whom were peasants or workers, suddenly found themselves in command. The results were as you might expect. The order led to widespread confusion and further undermined discipline within the ranks. Many soldiers took this as a sign that they no longer had to obey their superiors or even stay at the front. Not surprisingly, this contributed to the accelerating disintegration of the Russian army. But Order No. 1 also had deeper implications. It reflected the growing influence of socialist ideas within the military and the wider society. It was a sign of the times, a clear indication that the old order was crumbling and a new one was taking shape. In essence, Order No. 1 was a significant shift in power dynamics within the Russian army. It played a critical role in the soldiers, growing disillusionment with the war, and set the stage for the mass desertions that would follow. 
Amidst this chaos, the Bolsheviks, led by Vladimir Lenin, saw an opportunity. The Bolsheviks, a faction within the Russian Social Democratic Labor Party, were revolutionary socialists who sought a radical change in society. They were not just political opportunists, they were ideologues, believing in the power of the proletariat, the working class, to shape their own destiny. In a society ravaged by war, with countless families grieving the loss of their sons, brothers, and fathers, the Bolsheviks' message was simple and powerful. Peace, land, and bread. Peace for the weary soldiers at the front lines who had seen too much death and destruction. Land for the countless peasants who toiled on the vast estates of the nobles, dreaming of a patch of earth they could call their own. And bread for the starving masses in the cities, whose cries of hunger echoed in the cold, empty streets. This message resonated deeply with the people. Soldiers, tired of the endless war, began to see in the Bolsheviks the promise of a peaceful future. Peasants, long oppressed by the feudal system, saw a glimmer of hope for justice. And the urban proletariat, the factory workers and laborers, saw in the Bolsheviks' message a vision of a society where they were no longer the exploited, but the masters of their own fate. The Bolsheviks' promises found eager listeners among the weary soldiers and the suffering populace. The disintegration accelerated with mass desertions. The Russian army, once a formidable force, began to crumble from within. Soldiers, weary from the relentless war and disillusioned by the provisional government's empty promises, chose to abandon their posts. The front lines, once bustling with activity and filled with the sound of commands and gunfire, were now eerie specters of their former selves. The soldiers' committees, initially seen as a democratic solution, had become hotbeds of dissent and discontent, further fueling the desertion. It wasn't just the weariness of war that drove these men from their posts. They yearned for change, for a life that offered more than just the prospect of death on a distant battlefield. The Bolsheviks' promises of peace, land, and bread echoed in their ears, a seductive siren call that was hard to ignore. The desertions were not a trickle, but a flood. Thousands upon thousands of soldiers slipped away, leaving the front lines dangerously undermanned. They returned to their homes, their families, and their fields, leaving behind a life they no longer wished to lead. The impact of these desertions was devastating. The once mighty Russian army was now a hollow shell, its ranks depleted, its spirit broken. In the face of such massive desertions, the army's disintegration was all but inevitable. Soldiers, tired of war and hungry for change, left the front lines by the thousands. This marked a pivotal moment in the history of the Russian army, and indeed, the fate of Russia itself. The final blow came with the October Revolution. In October 1917, the Bolsheviks, under Lenin's leadership, seized power in a virtually bloodless coup. The provisional government crumbled, unable to withstand the tide of change. The Bolsheviks, with their promise of peace, had won the hearts of the weary soldiers and the suffering populace. One of their first acts was to pull Russia out of the war. The Treaty of Brest-Litovsk, signed in early 1918, ended Russia's participation in World War I, but at a heavy cost. They ceded vast territories to Germany and its allies, further shrinking the already dwindling Russian army. The October Revolution marked the end of the Russian army, as it was known, and the beginning of a new era for Russia. The mighty force that had once stood strong was now a mere shadow of its former self, a poignant symbol of a nation in the throes of profound transformation. The disappearance of the Russian army in 1917 was not just a military defeat. It was a transformative moment that reshaped Russia and the world. From the ashes of the once mighty Russian army, a new nation emerged, one driven by the collective will of its people, not by the whims of a czar. The soldiers' committees, the Bolsheviks' rise to power, the mass desertions, they all paint a picture of a time when the world was changing at a breakneck pace. And at the heart of it all was the common soldier, weary from war and yearning for change. This is the story of 1917, a year when the world held its breath as an army disappeared and a nation reinvented itself. The story of 1917 reminds us of the power of collective will and the profound impact of war on the fabric of society. Thank you for joining us on this journey through a pivotal chapter in history. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more historical deep dives.
Thank you once again for joining us in this historical journey. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the transformative year of 1917, don't forget to follow us for more. Your support helps us in creating more content like this, exploring the fascinating intricacies of history. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this turbulent period of Russian history. What impact do you think the disappearance of the Russian army had on the world stage? How do you think the events of 1917 still resonate today? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Also, if there are other historical events or periods you'd like us to cover, do let us know. Our aim is to make history accessible and engaging, and your suggestions are invaluable in helping us achieve that. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on our latest content. And don't forget to hit the bell icon for notifications so you never miss a video. Stay curious, stay informed, and as always, keep exploring history with us. See you in the next video.